this week on the show. The surfers making waves in Fukushima 10 years after the nuclear disaster. The hunt for the priceless Royal Russian room stolen by the Nazis. And we get a taste of sustainable sake. Cheers to that. Come by. Come by. <laughs> We start this week in the Fukushima region in northeastern Japan. Now, as the world learns to cope with one disaster, a global pandemic, here they're marking another. It's exactly 10 years since an earthquake and tsunami triggered a nuclear catastrophe. The region has sadly become synonymous with those tragic events. A decade on, I'm here to find out how people are still battling to move on from the past. This is Kita Izumi Beach, some 70 kilometers from the center of Fukushima City. While it's hard to believe now, this beach was once one of the most popular surfing destinations in Japan. Surfing was popularized in Japan in the 1960s when American GIs stationed here headed for the beaches armed with their boards. And the surf scene has been growing ever since. But at 2.46 p.m. on March the 11th, 2011, everything changed when 100 kilometers up the coast, disaster struck. A nine magnitude earthquake triggered the most devastating tsunami in Japanese history. Deadly 14 meter waves engulfed entire communities, breaking down the walls of the Daiichi nuclear power station, triggering four days of catastrophic failures to the reactor's cooling systems releasing radioactivity and leading to an evacuation order covering a 12-mile radius. This man's home was washed away. あの、避難しました。結局悲惨なのもあるけど、自分の家がない、亡くなって、仕事もなくなって、で、家族もなくして、もう、こう、もう本当真っ白になるっていう感じですね。in total, the disaster claimed over 18,000 lives. Sadly, events organized to commemorate the 10th anniversary of this horrific moment have been canceled or scaled back due to the pandemic. Today, a decade on, after a $20 billion cleanup operation, the government says as much as 97% of the prefecture is safe to visit. Locals are returning to live and domestic tourism is on the up partly thanks to these surfers. Surfing Suzuki-san was one of the first people back in the water. Surfing 
、まあ、誰もいない海にあの入っていったっていう感じです。And they did return. Kita Izumi officially opened in 2019 after the community pulled together by cleaning up the beach and hiring lifeguards. And today, despite the water being about six degrees, there are plenty of surfers out. この海をもっともっと楽しむことがもっとできるように日本にそういうことを発信したいっていうことでこのサーフツーリズムっていう活動をやっていますのでこれはもっともっとあの今後あのいろんなあの災害のあの元でもあるいはこういうコロナのような被害の元でもまた町を駆けつける強力なツールになるかなというふうに考えています。So how long have you been surfing? It's about five years. Five years. I'm just a beginner. Yeah. So why did you start surfing? You started after the earthquake. Were you not worried about radiation in the water? I'm not so much scared because many, many people are surfing around there. So is it safe? Yes, I think so. Yeah. あのこの福島の放射線の問題についてはあの震災後もうあの震災の年の2011年の夏から。あのもちろん国もあの調査をしてますしそれ以外にあの市役所も独自にあの調査をしていますまたあの我々サーファー僕もそうなんですけれどもあの独自に調査をして本当に国が出している情報と市役所が出している情報と我々が本当に調べた情報ときちんとマッチしているかどうかをチェックしていました。So、test the wet sand and it's 0.4,0.5 still safe、yes. あのこのレベルっていうのはやはり科学的なレベルであってで僕たちがこのサーフィンをこのサーフィンこのポイントサーフィンをし始める時によりどころにしたのもやっぱりこの数字なんですねそれをもっともっとその姿をもっともっと知ってもらうことでその安心のレベルっていうものも少しずつ少しずつ戻ってくるんじゃないかなっていうふうに考えていますだから僕たちはこのレベルこれを常に Levels have returned to where they were before the disaster, and despite a recent earthquake nearby, authorities say the water is completely safe. まあ、放射能もの問題もだんだんこう大丈夫だっていうのが浸透してきてこのネガティブなイメージを変えるっていうのはやっぱり非常に時間がかかるし難しい問題だと思いますそういうイメージっていうのも払拭されていくんじゃないかなっていうふうに考えてますだから我々はこの活動を絶対にあの止めらずにずっと継続してやっていきたいなと思ってます。Positive signs with the vaccine starting to be rolled out in many countries. But travel is still some way off for most of us. So here's what's happening online around the world this coming month. Something to keep us going until we can hit the road again. Windmills overlooking endless fields of colourful tulips have been the traditional postcard of the Netherlands for centuries. Every year at the end of March, millions of tourists usually flock to this flat country to admire the flowers blooming. But in 2020, the pandemic hit and the Festival of Colour transferred online. This year again, you can catch Kokenhof and the largest flower park in the world virtually. Als jij niet naar Keukenhof kunt komen, brengen wij Keukenhof naar jou. From the 20th of March, head to their website to watch two videos posted each week with some of their seven million flower bulbs putting on a show of colour. And although the wild parties usually held to celebrate the King's birthday on the 27th of April are on hold this year, you can still tour Amsterdam's most famous museums online. They have joined forces with Google to offer virtual tours of their collection. 
wander through the exhibition rooms of Van Gogh's museum and look at the painter's self-portraits on your own, without the crowds. If you miss nature, there are plenty of options to explore the wildlife from your couch. For example, twice a day on Wild Earth TV, you can take part in a live safari in Africa and interact with a guide while being filmed on the lookout for the Big Five. Hey, girls. Wow, what a stunner. You see that scent marking as she goes. Now, if anybody wonders what a fresh track looks like, that is it. Webcams are everywhere too. Explore.org features hundreds of live streams from all around the world. Just choose the animal you're interested in. For those who'd like to celebrate the World Penguin Day on the 25th of April, you've got four live webcams to choose from, including one located underwater at the Aquarium of the Pacific in California. And finally, if you want to regain your fitness after lockdown, Virtual marathons are now all the rage. You sign up to complete a full marathon wherever you live and register your timings using a running app. You can find a full range of virtual marathons on different websites. And if you need an extra incentive to take part, some of the proceeds for the next virtual marathon in Mexico will go towards supporting local indigenous communities. Well, still to come on The Travel Show. It's not as easy as it looks. I learn the craft and graft of creating prize-worthy sake. It's like sweeping treacle. So don't go away. Next up, a tale of missing royal treasures. The opulent amber room was a stunningly intricate and ornate chamber built inside a Russian palace near St. Petersburg in the 18th century. But during the turmoil of World War II, it was dismantled and shipped to Germany, where it simply disappeared. В более позднее время, 16, 17, 18 века, наступает эпоха расцвета художественной обработки янтаря, когда из этого солнечного камня делают предметы аристократического обихода. Заклеили бумагой, то есть так, чтобы при сотрясении от взрыва все это не осыпалось, но демонтировали и увезли в Кёнигсберг. Кёнигсберг, он являлся такой перевалочной базой культурных ценностей, которые эскладировала на территории города для потом транспортировки в другие части Германии. По мере приближения Красной Армии к границам Рейха началась масштабная эвакуация ценностей и подготовка специальных хранилищ тайников. Но никаких следов горения янтаря найдено не было. И было предположено, что все-таки комната сохранилась, но где-то спрятана, сокрыта, то ли на территории замков каких-то глубоких подземельев, то ли вывезена куда-то еще в иные хранилища. До военное время с комнаты периодически падали какие-то кусочки. И смотрители поднимали эти кусочки и складывали в коробочку. Так вот комната пропала, а эта коробочка с подлинными деталями интарной комнаты, она сохранилась. В 
по вот этой вот черно-серо-белой гамме затем был восстановлен колорит подлинной янтарной комнаты. Она будет найдена, это было бы величайшее счастье. Она скорее будет представлять собой факт истории, а не произведение искусства. Потому что такие произведения из достаточно хрупкого материала требуют очень деликатного обращения, требуют музейной среды. And to end this week's show from Fukushima, I'm visiting one of the oldest sake breweries in Japan. Some say it's the fresh water that runs down from the surrounding mountains that makes Fukushima sake so good. Others say it's the extreme weather in the region. Either way, the brewers are doing something right, as the region's world-famous sake has won a record-breaking amount of awards. Sake is a rice liquor that's over 2,000 years old. It used to be made by chewing grains of rice and spitting it into a vat so that the saliva enzymes would ferment with the yeast to produce alcohol. Needless to say, methods have moved on since then. There are over 60 breweries in Fukushima, but this is one of the oldest. Yaoe Monsato is the seventh generation owner. Evolving technology means the quality of sake is higher than it's ever been. But the industry is at a crossroads and domestic sales here in Japan are falling because younger people have developed a taste for beer and imported wines instead. So breweries like this one are turning to tourism and the international market, and it's paying off. Exports are at a record high, and innovation and sustainability are helping to fuel this growing craft sake movement. <laughs> Winter is the busiest time of year for sake breweries. Colder winter temperatures make for a higher quality sake. The head brewer, or koji, still completes much of the process by hand. So this smells just like rice. So it's been washed, then it's been dried, and now it's in here. I'm assuming there's yeast inside here to ferment. Yes. The rice mash stays in the vat for a week. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's not as easy as it looks, actually. It's quite heavy. It's like sweeping treacle. The whole process is incredibly labor intensive. Ten years ago, the brewery was left fighting for its survival. Contamination from the nearby nuclear disaster meant all food and drink exports from Fukushima had to be tested. しばらくの間は全くね、あの、注文がありませんでした。もう、このまま行くと、もう会社は成り立たない。倒産しそう。っていう風に思ったんですが、不評被害でですね、もう福島の汚染されてしまったという、まあ、正しくない、あの、情報
The local government says that by 2040, the entire region will be powered 100% by renewable energy. 100 kilometres away on the coast, another local is rebuilding her town's image with the help of sake. Until a year ago, this area was a no-go zone. Makiko-san returned home as soon as the evacuation orders were lifted. She was only 13 when the disaster struck. この田んぼはえっと、to break the stigma attached to her hometown and to mark 10 years since the disaster, she crowdfunded to launch the Okuma Sake project. ただ ま、この日本酒プロジェクトを通してえっと、こうやって田んぼが整っていくようにこれからも大熊町があの少しずつ着実にこうより良い町になるようになっていったらいいなって思います。It was great to get a little taste of some Fukushima sake. Well, that's all we've got time for this week. Coming up next time. Whilst we all wait to start traveling again, we've got some more inspiration for you this time from Thailand, as we look back at some of our favorite adventures there. So I'm about to step in the ring with Momo. He <laughs> looks really mean. In the meantime, you can catch up with more of our trips on social media. We're in all the usual places. And you can see more of our recent programs on the BBC iPlayer. But until next time, from all of us here in Fukushima in Japan, keep planning your next adventure, and we'll see you very soon. Music